Captain, I'm receiving an urgent docking request from another vessel. Greetings from the Halcyon Parcel Service. Delivery is guaranteed within standard margins of certainty. I've got a special delivery for Alex Hawthorne of The Unreliable. Uh, with your permission, I'll see it transferred to your ship. It's a parcel, sir. A parcel is a shipment wrapped and prepared for delivery, sir. Opening a customer's parcel is strictly against regulations. HPS's no peaking policy guarantees that your deliveries remain confidential and HPS remains free of any liability. With alacrity. Stand by, Captain Hawthorne. An HPS certified distribution technician has deposited the parcel into your cargo hold in accordance with hazardous waste disposal procedures. They dispense three complimentary spritzes of Anti Cleo's Citrus Squirt Air Freshener. That's the HPS touch for you, Captain Hawthorne. On behalf of HPS, I'd like to remind you that HPS is not responsible for any damage, defacement, or unseemliness to your parcel. Thank you for your patience, and please remember HPS for all of your future parcel-related needs. Mixed up in some shady business on Gorgon. Should have known better. But I landed on something big. And now this job's an itch I can't stop scratching. There's a whole research compound left to the Sprats. I think I'm close to figuring out why. But something dangerous is closer to me. Got the job through one mini Ambrose. Top runger who just came into some money was offering a hefty bid card for qualified help. Trust me, her money's good. Talk to Minnie. Take the job. If I ain't gonna live to see the payday, might as well be you. Consider us even, old pal. I don't mean to sound prim, Captain, but there's gotta be a better way to ask someone to do you a favor. I just wanna say, we gotta take this job. This is the closest I ever been to starring in a serial drama. Only thing we're missing is a couple cameras and a soundtrack. Lucky Montoya owed Captain Hawthorne a considerable debt. I believe this is what humans refer to as payback. Captain, the message contains landing coordinates for a small asteroid in the Charybdis cluster. It was recently registered to a Wilhelmina Ambrose. He was an old friend of Alex Hawthorne's. Lucky Montoya had a statistically significant tendency to encounter situations of extreme danger. Well, yeah. I doubt this guy lost his arm filling out paperwork. He was also the fourth best paid freelancer in the system. This had less correlation with his measured aptitudes, which rank at or below average, than with a pattern of fortunate circumstances. I have transferred the coordinates for Ambrose Manor to your navigation terminal. We can travel there when you are ready. Welcome to Ambrose Manor. We were not expecting company. Please follow. Do not stray from the path. Don't worry, little fella. We're mostly law-abiding folk. You gotta admit, that was kind of funny. Felix, what if it's our... This ain't a proper serial adventure without a narrator. How about this? Our intrepid heroes stepped foot on Gorgon, and in the distance, a drinking establishment beckoned. Come here. Let's have a chat. 
All right, inspection time. Look at my eyes for as long as you can without blinking. Starting now. Good. Look up. Now look down. Thank you. Got him from my mother. You're doing swell. Now, name and occupation. Good enough for me. You're cleared to pass. That was a sanity check. If you had changed like the others, it'd be in your eyes. You'd also be drooling, cursing, and making a mess of the place. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. You can head on downstairs. Every day, salvagers and scrappers set out to comb the ruins and make their fortune. The ones who come back, they aren't always the same men or women who left. They change. Never for the better. First, they get real twitchy and paranoid, shouting at folks who aren't there. Then they smell like they soiled themselves, on account of how they soiled themselves. After that, they're gone. Nothing but animals wearing human skin. Seen it happen myself. It's never pretty. Stay cool. Now this looks like a real dive. Hey, I wonder if they got those floorboards that creak when a stranger walks in. Oh, ugh. This place smells like Felix's birth. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house, and I won't even water it down. Will it be? Bottoms up. I assume you're here for salvage. Even if I did, I ain't supposed to play favorites. Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle, but that's life. You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Lucky. Sure, I knew him. He could get a little... dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took on a dangerous job. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the Office of Creative Incubation, just down the road. The way he talked about the job, you just knew Lucky had hit pay dirt. Not that I was jealous. Around here, that sort of luck can be uh, hazardous to your health. Uh, awful shame about what happened to him. You really want to hear my story? <laughs> Law, most everyone around here is sick to death of it by now. Last I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the cane and scared it off. Get this. The canid was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. Anyway, the arm was clutching a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. Third floor. Once I figured he wasn't coming back to pay his tab, I left his room unlocked to air it out. You can help yourself to anything you left behind. Fair warning, I've been letting the regulars use it for a quick lie down. Just wash your hands when you're done. Trust me. Yep, 
Be seeing you. Groundbreaker never had bars this nice. They got balconies and everything. Do you uh, think the folks here like strangers? Because some of them are looking at us like maybe not. What have you got there? Adrena. That's a human eyeball. You think they stick the preservative in before or after the eye comes out? Don't you worry, Mr. Lucky Spirit. We're gonna finish your work and put you to rest good and proper. Who knew what darkness lurked in the heart of Gorgon? Captain Hawthorne and his crew were about to find out. Initiating ocular measurement. Measurement complete. Ocular identification complete. Welcome, Clarence Mostly. Access granted. Welcome to the Office of Creative Incubation. You tell me Spacer's Choice can build an office this pretty, but can't pay their workers a couple more bits? They got one for Edgewater. Oh, it's just Saltuna. Come on, we got a volcano too. Ah, the spacer's chosen. Lousiest team that ever did swing a tossball stick. Feeling like I might dirty it up just by looking at it. sniffing about. You'd best go back the way you came. There's nothing for you here.
call me the ghost of Gorgon, or its warden. This place is a graveyard. All that was done here should be forgotten and left to rot. I did, and I am prepared to do worse if you ignore my warning. Gorgon is the birthplace of marauders. We created them here, in this very facility. They are our misbegotten children, born of hubris and vanity. I don't understand. They made marauders here? How? That don't make any sense. How could marauders get to Edgewater from all the way out here? They hold no fondness for trespassers. I've placed the facility under emergency lockdown to keep them safe. Let the marauders die in peace, or I will make certain that you die with them. Mr. Thompson used to say marauders are just folks whose spirits have been weakened by charity and laziness. You mean that wasn't true? Back on the Groundbreaker, I heard stories. People talked about marauders roaming every corner of Halcyon. Anywhere you found people, you'd find marauders too. for a comms tower, right? Ought to be one of the tallest things around, and it's gonna get a signal past these canyons. Didn't we see a big communication tower on the way over here? I sure hope that spooky person on the screen ain't waiting for us. I'm about ready to jump out of my skin as it is. Always wanted to go strolling through a ghost town. Are all these marauders former townsfolk? A lot of the equipment here is still in good shape. Wouldn't go amiss in Edgewater. I figured Spacer's Choice had a little outpost here. But no, they got the whole asteroid to themselves. How do you just buy a whole asteroid? Captain, transmission request from Andros Manor. Captain! Imagine my surprise when I saw the Unreliable leaving Gorgon with so much urgency and purpose. Tell me you found Mother's Journal. I'm positively dying for good news. Well, isn't that exciting? A lonely asteroid, an old research facility, and now shady corporate intrigue. And here I've just been doing the crossword. Any promising leads on Mother's Journal? I've watched enough detective serials to know that a promising lead can get you anywhere. I seem to recall that Mother worked closely with Gorgon's R&D personnel but not close enough to invite them over for dinner and cocktails, if you get my meaning. By now, they'll have moved on with their lives. If only I could do the same. I knew Mother was involved with some important chemical trials. 
but I had no idea her pet project was Adrena Time. Adrena Time is a working man's stimulant, like a caffeinoid. Very popular at launch, though the marketing quieted down over time. What? No! I mean, there's some very morbid wording in the fine print, but I had no idea Adrena Time could make marauders out of people. That's it. That must be it. Spacer's choice is keeping their dirty little secret about Adrena Time off the record. We have to find Mother's Journal. If we don't, then Spacer's choice gets away with murder. I only hope we aren't too late. Adrena Time was touted as the working man's best friend. A drug that boosted productivity with no adverse effects. The promise of Adrena Time cannot be overstated. Exhaustion and fatigue were supposed to be obsolete. Workplace accidents would be things of the past. For whatever reason, the drug never lived up to that promise. I don't know. And thanks to Spacer's choice, we may never find out. I know that I'd like to see a colony where the promise of Adrena Time was fulfilled. And I doubt I'm the only one. Thank you. I certainly ought to know what I'm doing. I spent years trying to break into pharmaceuticals, professionally speaking. Mother wouldn't hear of it. She didn't think I had the wit to succeed in her line of work. Safe travels. If your leads give you any trouble, be sure and give them some trouble back, yes? Ta! Down there, a new ship. Doesn't look like any of the corporate freighters. Fancy Creole energizing voices. Enjoy six cups worth of concentrated caffeine at every dollar. Here they come! <laughs> your face you're wanted by the board wow you're a living breathing outlaw that is until security outside gets their eyes on you but let's not spoil the moment if you're here for the annual canid review i'm afraid it's already over only thing going on behind those doors is good old-fashioned lawful behavior this greeting constitutes your confidentiality agreement you hereby agree not to disclose the location or existence of these events. Thank you for cooperating. Then you should have told me that before I greeted you. Defaulting on a verbal agreement is a punishable offense. Now then, how can I help you? Mr. Mostly is indeed attending our event, although I am disappointed to discover he did not officially enter his canid Laplace into our competition. You should find Mr. Mostly just inside the prep room. Head inside and take the door to your left. Oh, just hear me out. Do you know the interesting thing about canid shows? Mathematically speaking, the interesting thing about canid shows is this. They're an exercise in futility. Winning is predetermined. Over time, the inevitable trend is that the race goes to the swift. 
time and chance are just statistical outliers. In other words, if you put enough canids through enough trials, the one with the most optimal attributes generally wins. Exercise in futility. What gave me away? Wait, don't tell me. You've read my monograph, putting the us in calculus, or how to use mathematics to find your statistically significant other. I'm afraid I don't really do autographs, but yes, I am Clarence Mostly. Yes, that's us. Mostly oak trees, too. My grandfather invented them, you know. Well, no, he didn't invent mostly oaks, but he did purchase the naming rights back during the terraforming days. It's essentially the same thing. How do you know that name? Project Gorgon was supposed to be a secret. Sorry, were you addressing me by name, or... You know what, never mind. It's not important. It's true, I was involved with Project Gorgon, but that chapter of my life is long since closed. Listen, I don't know what you want with Gorgon or with me, but let me give you some free advice, hmm? Let the past go. Live in the moment. Enjoy the party. Lifting the lockdown won't be easy. You'll need to send overrides from the chem lab and human inquiry. I don't have that level of clearance, but I know two people who do. The trouble is, I don't know you. I don't trust you. I washed my hands of Gorgon and you're asking me to dirty them all over again. I'm going to need a good reason. I advise against trying to dig up what's been buried. Sooner or later, you're going to draw up something rotten. I want a favor from you. Do something for me, and I'll do something for you. That way, we don't have to rely on mutual trust. A grand prize trophy to the Canid Review. I want it in my hands. Get me that trophy, and I'll give you the remaining researchers. Names, locations, as much information as I have. Yes, but the winner is still in deliberation. Committee won't deliver a result for another six to eight weeks. <laughs> Bureaucracy. The trophy's being held in a vault at the other end of this hall. Find a way inside, disable any security, lift, carry, deliver. Simple as that. My canid, Laplace, is statistically superior to every other canid in this review. Better average sprinting time, superior gait coefficient, optimal anatomical symmetry. I didn't bother entering little Laplace in this pointless contest. He's already won on paper, you see. That trophy rightfully belongs to him. Oh, you're much too kind. Does this mean you'll do it? Head into the main hall and take the elevator down into the maintenance tunnels. You'll find a service passage that leads up into the trophy room. The maintenance tunnel is the only way up into the trophy room. Some technician barred the door shut on our end. Ask Tilda Coatsworth about it, over by the podium. Oh, you're quite welcome. I look forward to observing your results. Come now, Anubis. You must perk up.
All security. Folks don't mind us borrowing this. Come now, Anubis, you must hurt. Oh, you don't have to be scared of these canids, Captain. I don't think they're gonna hurt you. Never cared much for hors d'oeuvres. The word is just grotesque. All those superfluous letters? Ruin my appetite. At the moment, nothing. I have a one-track mind. I can't stop thinking about that trophy. Why isn't it in my hands? When is it going to be in my hands? And so on and so forth. You get me that best-in-show trophy, and it'll clear my mind right up. My eye! I was wondering where I'd misplaced that old thing. It's perfectly preserved, you know. Every eye possesses unique dimensions, not unlike a fingerprint. The circumference, the shape, the color of the iris. An eye makes excellent proof of identification, assuming you don't mind removing one. I'd rather not get into the details. If Spacer's Choice ever asks you to test out their new model of monocle, just say no. Well, that's rather responsible of you. I'll put a good word in your permanent record. What's on your mind? My trophy! Look at this thing! Have you ever seen a more garish monument to the boredom of the elite? If only Grandfather Mostly were alive today, I would have loved to wave this trophy right in front of his cataracts. I hope you won't take it personally when I say I had my doubts about you. Nothing ever gets done in Byzantium, you see. Competent work is, well, a statistical anomaly. Lifting the emergency lockdown requires overrides from the Chem Lab and Human Inquiry. Access to those facilities requires authorizations from two senior level researchers. Marion Blakesley, Jasper Lowe. They went into hiding after the project collapsed, but I've managed to calculate their last known whereabouts within a reasonable margin of error. I see you're familiar with my technique. I'd love to show you my numbers, but there aren't nearly enough napkins in this room. After the project shut down, I had to keep my mind occupied. I worked on my actuarial tables, calculated the average lifespan of a spacer's choice worker, that sort of thing. I realized some of the researchers had to be alive. I ran some numbers, did a little research, and concluded that the two most likely survivors are Marion Blakesley and Jasper Lowe. Nonsense. I just needed a good old-fashioned statistical problem to busy my mind. Keeps the faculties lubricated. Let me stop you there. I don't accept anything for free. And if you're going to analyze me, I'd have to go through the trouble of hiring you on contract. Think what you will of my intentions. My calculations are sound. You'll find Marion Blakesley and Jasper Lowe at the enclosed locations. As far as I know, Jasper Lowe and Marion Blakesley are the only two surviving researchers with high-level clearance. If you want to lift the lockdown on the manufactory, you'll need to send an override from the Chem Lab and Human Inquiry. I'm afraid it's the only way.
I know it feels like you're being led on. What is that colorful metaphor commoners use? A wild sprat chase? Remember, this is Spacer's choice we're talking about. Their security protocols are just as inefficient and frustrating as their manufacturing. Try to exercise caution. It's good for your lifespan. You did fetch a trophy for my little applause. Technically, that makes you my canid servant. And by the transitive property of employment, my responsibility. No need to sound so astonished. Now, was there anything else? Look at these whole heads. Hey, you! Over here! Hey! You! You serious? Get back here! Whoa, whoa, who's this? The back phase brat? What are you doing here? I've seen these guys around. They like to walk with cold shoulders and play at being mercenaries. What do they call themselves again? Landscapers? Green thumbs? Uh Gardeners! We're the gardeners. And you know this is our turf, kid. Yeah, I know that lady. I know she's looking for, uh, solitude. She hired us to make sure no one comes sniffing around. Guess that's bad news for your plan there. Yeah, we're the gardeners. We keep order back here on these dangerous streets. Huh? Hallways. You know what I mean. Anyway, Blakesley's given us standing orders to strongly discourage anyone who tries to come in. I like to, uh, extrapolate from there. This deal with Blakesley's pretty sweet. We get paid, and we get fresh greens every week. My gums never looked healthier. What can I do for you, Mr. Home Invasion? Spacer's Choice send you? Took your sweet time. Gorgon? I holed up in a forgotten cargo bay of a rotting colony ship just so I could never hear that name again. But here you are. That bastard. Is he still only mostly worthless, or has he achieved mathematical perfection in that regard? He'll be on to the next hobby in a week. Clarence lacks the attention span for this sort of thing. Someone wants to dig up the past, and you're the shovel, right? Ambrose. 
Well, I'll assume you're caught up then. That or hopelessly confused. Corporate demanded a product they could throw onto shelves. That put the squeeze on low at Chem to develop formulas. Samples. But how do you know if the product works? You run tests, see what happens. That's where human inquiry and auditing came in. I ran HIA and HIA ran the tests again and again and again. And what happens is a whole lot of wasted time and even more bodies. Testing supervisor. I designed the initial testing regimens, managed the staff, made sense of the test results. Tried to anyway. People are complicated, and I don't just mean the test subjects. Try and avoid working with people if you can. It always gets messy. If we ain't doing this for people, I don't see the point. People's all there is. Hey, it's just advice. You've heard the adverts, right? Work day and night, still feel refreshed the next morning. Now, what we tested for was dexterity, efficiency, compliance, the traits of a good employee. Numbers never came out right. I could have pumped gallons of those chemicals into every living soul in this colony. Wouldn't have changed that. What we got was marauders. Yeah, good luck making that one stick. It's in the fine print, you know? Whatever was in those chemicals, it didn't matter what test we ran. We kept getting the same results. The proto-adrena time solution was both monstrously addictive and had catastrophic effects on the psyche and intellect. A real boon to the colony. Sure, I don't mean to stop you. Indulge a scientist. What do you want out of this investigation of yours? Trying to liven up your memoir? Really? What good can that possibly do? How about you, kid? You've got Orphan written all over that baby face of yours. What do you get out of headbutting murderous auto mechanicals for your captain here? First of all, I don't headbutt. I dropkick. As for what I get out of it, I don't know. It's fun. Hope it stays that way, kid. That's all I've got. Here, I still have this pass. Don't much feel like hanging on to it anymore. Made my exit the moment the project started falling apart. Had to steal some credentials. This should get you into the volunteer induction entrance. Please, I just messaged people with fake demands for their passwords. That's when they didn't just leave codes written down on pieces of paper. If I couldn't talk my way out past a simple facility lockdown, I'd be working for Rizzo's. That'll get you inside. What you do from there, that's up to you. Come on, I've left it behind me. Yeah, well, you have to go on, don't you? Guilt's a useless emotion. What good is thinking about the past over and over and over again? Please, I don't need... Fine. Fine, here, I remember one of my access codes. Just punch in the keypad equivalent for replication. Should get you into the offices. Maybe get you to my terminal a little sooner. Go test that persistence of yours out on Gorgon. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure the auto mechanicals don't bother you on the way out. Wow. Look at those stars. Don't it make you feel small in the best way? Experiencing evacuation anxiety. Spacer's Choice recommends zero G Oh, oh my law! What is that smell? Trying real hard. Thank 
These folks were supposed to be volunteers. Why do they got them bunk it? their experiments. Watch their prisoners claw their eyes out and go screaming mad. Probably took notes. Deep breath, Felix. You're about to see something real twisted. I don't want to see no more. I, I can't take this. Let's get out of here, boss. We've seen enough.
don't know how much more of this I can take, Captain. I'm about to chew my own hands off with nerves. Are we being stalked? Is that what's going on? Because I don't mind having secret admirers and all, but this is getting a little creepy. I knew this place wasn't gonna be some pleasant seaside stroll, Captain, but I... I don't know how I can live with what we've seen here. All this cruelty done to regular working folks without even a shred of regret. And what's dogging me is... Why? You wanna know the worst part? Spacer's Choice knew exactly what Adrena Time did. And they didn't care. They weren't even thinking about the victims. I don't know if you're being sarcastic, and I'm not sure it matters. I don't know why Miss Ambrose has got her heart set in that journal. Nothing good ever came out of a place like this. is approaching our ship. Their intentions are currently indeterminate. Once I deduce their intentions, I will play one of two audio signals. A cheerful fanfare if they are friendly, alarms if they are hostile. Their intentions are no longer unknown. The unknown vessel has deployed a boarding mechanism. They will attach themselves to our airlock and attempt boarding shortly. That sound indicates that a boarding mechanism has successfully attached to our airlock. Captain, I am pleased to inform you that we are currently in the process of being boarded. I have been programmed to simulate joy and excitement at the opportunity to test my limited defensive capabilities. Captain Hawthorne installed a lethal shock trap on our airlock in the event of an invasion. I am prepared to deploy this trap at a moment's notice. I understand. Allow me to rectify my oversight. Captain, please be informed that our airlock has a death trap installed. The invading ship appears to be a decommissioned storage vessel. The crew are either pirates or freelancers. My opinion of their competence is low.
That is unlikely. Judging by the state of the invading ship and the competence of the boarding party, I deduce they are incapable of paying for dinner. Their ship is using a tracking device too sophisticated for their primitive astrogator. I conclude they are receiving outside assistance. If you prefer to make an escape, I can disable their boarding mechanism. However, as long as that tracking device remains on board their ship, they will be able to find us again. Yes, Captain. I am capable of deploying the Unreliable's articulated thrusters to dislodge their ship from our own. This is a temporary solution, however. A permanent solution may require your personal intervention. I understand, Captain. Please take hold of something stable as I deploy my fly swatting maneuver. Maneuver deployed. Enemy vessel successfully dislodged. Please be mindful of any spaceborne corpses drifting toward our hull. I am now capable of resuming navigation, Captain. What happened to these poor folks? It can't be the storm that did this. to Olympus. Would we just keep falling forever? Just asking. One team is a tragedy, two teams is a blunder. Ah, ah, ah. Shush. No talking. Concentrating. Damn it. I almost had it. The formula was in my mind, and I almost had it. I was so close to a breakthrough, I could practically taste it. You really did pick the worst time to manifest. Oh, hang on. I see what's happening. You're real. Ergo, not a hallucination. This is interesting. I have several questions for you. Let's start with the obvious. Who are you, and how are you even alive? No, you don't. There's nothing interesting in Mechemlan. There's nothing interesting in Gorgon at all. Gorgon is a featureless rock dragged along by the gravitational current of a barren asteroid belt. The Chem Lab is a graveyard. You won't find anything there but the dead. Well, it wasn't me. I've been stuck in this place for ages. In any case, it's becoming obvious you're not listening to sensible warnings. If you've set your heart on exploring my old labs, I won't try to dissuade you. Indulge me with a favor, and I'll give you the access you want. The electromechanical turbine is offline. Without any power, I can't possibly continue my work. Be a deer and reactivate it for me. That's all I ask. Not that it's any of your business, but I don't get to quit. My colleagues are dead, and yet I live. So I don't get to quit. Take the elevator to the storm platform at the top of this facility. Reactivate the turbine, and I'll give you the access you want. Right, boss? 
Facilities back on the grid and my pipes again floweth with the sweet, sweet essence of my salvation. I suppose I have you to thank for realigning the machine. Of course, of course, Jasper, you imbecile. You'll need my voice to get into the chem lab. I'm obviously not coming with you, so I'm giving you a recording of my dulcet speech. This recording should get you into the chem lab. I hope whatever you're after is worth the trauma. I wouldn't go back there if I was higher than the mercury levels in a can of salt tuna. Wait, take my gun while you're at it. If you end up dying on Gorgon, there's a non-zero chance I'll feel partially responsible. Neither of us want that. Die, perhaps? Auto-mechanical sentries are generally programmed to ignore corpses. I don't like the idea of going back to that place. To that life. Yes, I know it's not me risking my throat gallivanting around Gorgon. It's you, for whatever madcap reasons you've got. I've helped you once, and I don't feel great about it. I made a clean break from Gorgon, and now it feels like you're asking me to tether myself back to that place. I suppose you've got a point. Or something resembling a point. I'm emotionally addled right now, and I'm allowing my sentiments to get the better of me. Here, my personal security keycard. There's a hallway near the processing room. It leads to a security terminal. Use this keycard to unlock the hallway and disable security. This facility is currently experiencing a heightened security event. Accessing this facility requires voice modulated passphrase. Please speak the passphrase. We attest to the zest with our hand on our chest. Be impressed as our guest by what we finessed. You are blessed to ingest what we thoroughly test. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Passphrase accepted. Access granted. Welcome, Dr. Jasper Lowe. Almost hard to believe something so awful as Adrena time came from a place that looks so... normal. Normal aside from the bodies, I mean. And the blood. 
Oh, so much blood. Traps ahead. Maybe behind, too. Uh, traps just about everywhere. Must be Doc Lowe's old office.
Since we've been traveling together, we've visited a lot of places that set my teeth on edge. This here makes my skin crawl. Halcyon's got no shortage of creepy science labs, boss. But this place? There's something real twisted about this place. Some of their folks ain't entirely bad. They made Edgewater's walls strong and kept our water running. But mucking about with our... our biology? Our bodies? It's wrong. I know it ain't saying much, being Spacer's choice and all. But Doc Lowe and his team was their best and brightest. How could this happen? There's a lot of smart people in Halcyon, and ain't all of them work for Spacer's Choice. If the folks here couldn't help the colony, maybe they shouldn't be in charge. I don't know if anybody's gonna take the fall for what happened here. It could be Miss Ambrose if she's not careful. SMC. After you, boss. Let's move quick and stick together. Ain't no one dying on my watch. Welcome to the Adrena Time Synthesis and Manufacturing Center. Brought to you by Spacer's Choice. This productivity auto mechanical unit is at your disposal. Its normal duties involve the management of legacy operations analytics. However, due to the promotion, demotion, death, or injury to other managers of this facility, this unit is now the acting manager of the following departments. Reception, human resources, accounting, technical support, manufacturing, Distribution. Security. Please direct any questions about those departments to Pam. Answers not guaranteed. According to this facility's hierarchy, there are zero acting managers at this Spacer's Choice facility. Not to worry. If a middle manager cannot immediately be replaced, Pam can safely oversee 3.176 departments. When you're in a productivity pinch, Pam can pick up the pieces. Uh-oh, it looks like there are intruders in this facility. Protocol recommends speaking to the head of facility security right away. Did you know that keeping your workers alive boosts productivity? That's why every Pam unit comes equipped with the latest Spacer's Choice weaponry. When Pam's emergency combat protocols are activated, your investments are sure to be protected. Warning! Due to power consumption, combat protocols cannot be activated when Pam's power is below 73% without deactivating managerial processes. Spacer's Choice policy dictates that managerial processes take priority. This unit's power rating is 57%. Pam is fully customizable to fit your preferred management style. With the correct override codes, you can alter any of Pam's behaviors at will. Some limitations apply. Spacer's Choice does not accept legal responsibility for any injuries or trauma sustained after altering Pam's behaviors. See manual for details. Hate messing with tangled cables or confusing batteries? With Pam, you'll never have to. Just pop in a Firefly brand industrial strength battery and Pam's ready to go. Out of batteries and need productivity now? No problem. Just hook Pam's power source up to another auto mechanical and Pam will get your employees back in line in no time. Emergency combat protocols cannot be engaged at less than 73% power without proper authorization. Please ensure that this unit is fully charged or present your override password. Hmm. 
I could give it a shot. Let me just, huh, okay, weird way to do that, but there ain't no accounting for cents. There we go. All I had to do was convince this old girl here that 73% was the new 100%. Easy as salt tuna and sawdust pie. This unit's power rating is 100%. Great! Emergency combat protocols are now available. Error. Employee's biometric ID does not match this unit's designated manager. Proceeding with verbal management test. Pretend that this PAM unit is one of your employees who has been working long hours. What would you say to give them an extra pep pill in their step? Like any good manager, Pam comes equipped with an emergency pep pill dispenser. Employees passing out at their desk is a thing of the past. Verbal management test complete. Result. Employee is a spacer's choice manager. 94% certainty. Engaging emergency combat protocols. Stand by. If I didn't know better, I'd I was watching me. I'm surprised this fountain still works. Uh, watch your hands, Captain. Be a bad time to lose them. Well, I guess any time would be a bad time, but especially now. Is this how a dream of time gets me? There's something mystical about this thing. Almost holy. Is that weird?
That's enough. Gorgon is mine. Go now, and I will not pursue you. But if you stay, I will set every last lawless fucking mercenary and Halcyon on you. It's your choice, Captain. Starting to hope I get to meet this jerk. Just so I can give him a good kick in the shins. Well, I thought about it, and I'm still gonna dropkick this coward the moment I get a chance. We are receiving an incoming signal, Captain. Captain, I see you've made some headway on Gorgon. Mother's old work terminal just lit up with a bunch of new protocols. Very exciting. What about Mother's journal? Any progress there? Are you accusing me of deception? Captain, I would never. Can you hear me, Captain? I'm getting some interference on my end. Captain. Captain! Hello again, little weasel. I must admit, you've surprised me. I threw nearly everything I had at you, and you overcame it all. Well spotted, Captain. We've both played our roles well, but it seems you've got the edge. I may have gravely underestimated you. You were smart to hire him, Wilhelmina. Well done. Mother! You're alive! And, and still on Gorgon? I thought she was! Whoever thought a lone scientist could survive for five years on Gorgon? This is so you, Mother, inserting yourself where you aren't needed and at the worst possible time! <sighs> Am I disrupting your vanity project, you empty-headed little twit? Olivia Ambrose doesn't do happy. Have you come back just to ruin everything again, Mother? At least this time, I have the power to stop you. Captain, this is a distraction. Let's set our differences aside and focus on what matters. Adrena time must never be revived. I may not have told you all of the facts, but I'm going to lay out everything I know. You can decide for yourself what to do with it. By now, you realize that Project Gorgon was devoted to a single drug, Adrena Time. A drug that hit the market in spite of calamitous side effects. Because they believed it could help Halcyon. I still believe it can. The project was a colossal failure. But you and I are going to revive it from the ashes. Adrena Time was a lie. Our drug will fulfill its broken promise for workers and employers across the colony. Mother wasn't equal to the task. Thankfully for us both, I'm not my mother. What you've seen is the result of Mother's leadership. I have no intention of repeating her mistakes. Mother's journal contains the activation codes for the Adrena Time Synthesizer, the key to a new Project Gorgon. We're going to start again, and this time with everything Project Gorgon didn't have. Better R&D, better scientists, clear goals, more funding, and a timeline that makes sense. Who else? Spacer's choice. After I showed them the error of their ways, the corporation couldn't wait to restart the project. If I can improve the chemistry, I can fix Adrena Time. We can put this colony back on track together.
Is it? I'll tell you what's insane. Every day, workers slump over from exhaustion. The gears of industry swallow them whole, and no one is coming to help. Adrena time is the break we can't fit into the schedule. The office with a window we can't afford to build. It's the best this rotten colony can do for people. No, but it's the beginning of enough. Don't let those bloodless leeches at Spacer's Choice walk you down this perilous path, Wilhelmina. You haven't the fortitude to endure it. As usual, Mother projects her failures onto me. If she had let me get involved from the start, we might have avoided this calamity altogether. My intentions are greater than some family squabble. Besides, Mother is the one who should be proving herself to me. Fuck your intentions. What have you done? I always suspected you were nothing more than an empty-headed social climber. This confirms it. <laughs> you will not shut me up. I will speak my piece. Even if it hurts. You see what I mean? Mother is afraid of being outdone by her empty-headed daughter. And she'll do anything to stop me. If I can save the colony and redeem the Ambrose family name, I owe it to myself to try. Mother be damned. With Adrena time, we can increase worker productivity orders of magnitude above ordinary stems and risk none of the harmful side effects. Imagine if we flooded the market with drugs that actually helped people. We could influence the very business model of Spacer's Choice. We won't be exploiting workers any longer. We'll be celebrating them giving them everything they need to succeed. No, this is madness. The project, the complex, it has to be destroyed, razed to the ground. It's the only way. Gorgon is a cautionary tale. We agree on that much. But if we go into this with open eyes, then history doesn't have to repeat itself. I need that facility online, but I can't do it while Mother's still a problem. By now, she'll have shut down the Gorgon reactor. Deal with her however it suits you, and get that facility back up and running. Don't do this, Wilhelmina. Minnie, don't make this choice. Adrena time is our future. It's bigger than money, bigger than family. It's the colony's best hope. Oh, please. We haven't been a family in ages. If Mother tries to get in your way, you have my permission to defend yourself. No matter the cost. This is absurd. You must end this madness, Captain. I'm glad you see things clearly. Here's what you must do. Return to my family's manor, Captain. Use the executive override code in my journal to activate the NDA protocol for my terminal. It will destroy the Gorgon drug synthesizer and put an end to Adrena time for good. One last thing. Minnie, she, she will try to force you to fight her. You don't have to. In fact, I would ask you not to. Whatever mistake she might make, she, she is still my daughter. Captain, in light of recent events, I'm putting the manor under lockdown. Until mother is dealt with, anyone who lands here is presumed hostile. Finish the job. I know you won't disappoint me.
sure we can't take a detour so I can fix that elevator? We've come a long way. Let's finish this. I'll give you one thing, little weasel. You are relentless. I did everything in my power to stop you, yet here you stand before me, offensively alive. Just so we're clear, if you intend to restart this machine, you'll have to go through me. I'm done talking. Cooperation, compromise, consensus, it resolves nothing. All that remains is action and inaction. Kill me, or let me destroy this place. If you believe this will be that simple, you haven't been paying attention. I can no more walk away than I can voluntarily cease breathing. Sure you can. You could start right now. It's easy. I will die before I let my empty-headed daughter resurrect Adrena time. Do you understand? There is no working with Spacer's Choice. You work for them. If you refuse, they sell your contract to a rival firm staffed by your enemies, or seize your housing and turn you out onto the street. And if you've really irritated them, they simply kill you. Sincerely, I wish you luck. I suspect you're just about the only person in this colony who believes that's possible. Besides that madman, Wells, judging by his wanted poster, he's always lived on the tail end of the sanity bell curve. He has it right. The board doesn't care for Halcyon. They'll do anything and use anyone to see their ends met. If she really agreed with Mr. Wells, she'd be out there helping him, not holed up here on this rock. She has no intention of curing the Marauders. She's only going to make more of them. Adrena time is addictive. It's poison. The only way they can perfect it is by making it more irresistible. I thought we were negotiating, Captain. I don't know about you, but I ain't ever been moved to help someone who threatens me. The only way you're touching this reactor is over my dead body. And I am not afraid to die, Captain. Very well. I'd like to ask you something before we end this farce. I think I'm due that much, at least. You've plumbed all the sordid depths of Gorgon. You know how many lives my work destroyed. And still, you want to revive it. Why? In the end, you're nothing but a mercenary. Ha! Huh. It's fitting, in a way. I once thought like you. I didn't care who I worked for or what I worked on, so long as the work satisfied my mind. But enough. You didn't come here for a lecture. Let's get this charade over with.
You've done it! The Gorgon asteroid is under my control. The Ambrose family curse is broken. And my legacy will rise from the ashes in triumph. Thank you, Captain. We're going to change the Halcyon colony. This time for the better. As for Mother, what's done is done. I grieved for her long ago. The woman who perished on Gorgon was only her shadow. Ah, yes, of course. To the future of Adrena time, may fortune and favor course through the veins of Halcyon. I haven't forgotten your payment. Here's a little extra for your discretion. I really hope you made the right decision, boss. I hope she really can help the colony. You can't be everywhere at once after all, Captain. Of course my gratitude goes out to your crew as well. Equal contributors all, I'm sure. This has been a long time coming, Captain. I can finally get on with my life. And the colony can begin to heal. Where do you go from here? What heroic challenge will the intrepid Captain of the Unreliable conquer next? Scandalous. I expect nothing less. You have a knack for aiming your sights high and shooting blind. We have that much in common. Good luck out there, Captain. I would wish you safe travels, but I do so admire how you rush headlong into danger. Keep it that way, won't you? <laughs>